Hi, I'm Charlie Arp with Clinical Architecture. Today I'm going to do a screencast on mapping SNOMED CT to ICD-9. This screencast is intended for people with basic database skills who want to know more about what's available relative to mapping SNOMED CT to ICD-9. For those of you who've seen the previous SNOMED CT Essentials screencast, I'm not going to cover a lot of that today. If you haven't seen it, it might be worthwhile going back to the Clinical Architecture Resources page and finding it and watching it. There are some things that would be good to understand, like the SNOMED concepts, before you get into this screencast, so be forewarned. One of the most important things to note is there are files that are provided by the NLM that have maps or cross-references from SNOMED CT to ICD-9-CM. It is not in the SNOMED CT Essentials file that we covered last time. In fact, there is something here called the ICD-0 cross-map, and it has some cross-map files in there, but those are not ICD-9-CM. That is a different coding system used for oncology. If you want to look at the sources that are available to go from SNOMED CT to ICD-9-CM, that is in another file that's at the same download page as the Essentials zip file, and that is the Optional Resources zip. When you download this, it unzips into the structure you see here, and one of the things under Optional Resources is the ICD-9-CM cross-map directory, and if you open that up, you're going to see these three files, which represent a standard SNOMED cross-map structure, with basically three files that go together. Two of them really do most of the work. One of them is just kind of a tag-along. We'll talk about that more in a second. And just like the SNOMED CT Essentials file, they are tab delimited text with a header in the first row. Everything I'm going to tell you pretty much came from the documentation. And the documentation for the cross map files is in the, uh, the essential zip file that we covered last time. So if you want to read the documentation, you have to go into the essentials file, go to documentation and other resources. There's a file in here called the technical reference guide, which is what I use for a reference. And in this file, there is a section called 5.2, which is the cross mapping table summary, which gives a nice summary of what these things are intended for and how you should use them. And also there's a appendix at the end that speaks specifically to the uh, SNOMED ICD-9 cross-reference. So those are both very useful resources. I suggest you go back into the SNOMED CT essential zip file and read that documentation. It's, it's very, very comprehensive. All right, the map files, as we covered last time, uh, SNOMED comes with concepts. And what we're trying to do is go from the SNOMED concepts to an ICD-9-CM code where possible. There are three files that are part of the cross-map structures. There is a cross-maps structure. In this case, it's called SCT cross-maps ICD-9, year, month, day. And then there are targets for those, and we'll get into that in a second. That takes you to an ICD-9 code. And then there's also this thing called a cross-map set. Now, for this particular cross map, there's only one record in there. It's always the same. So, you know, for all intents and purposes, you can, you can ignore that when you start using the files. So let's get into the guts. Um, we talked about these files. Here's the cross map set file. And all it has is a set ID, the name of the set, and then it's got a bunch of stuff in it. Um, but once again, you're never going to use it. You've got the cross map table itself which basically has a concept ID, a map target, some additional fields. The map target correlates to a target table. The target table has target codes, in this case ICD-9 codes, and some additional attributes, which should pivot you to an ICD-9 code. Now, I went through that fast on purpose because we're going to kind of go through this in a, in a little more detail. But at a high level, this is it. These three files, this one, this one, and this one, are basically what's in the optional data set. Let's skip the guts and go right to the autopsy. These are really the two files we're going to focus on. What we're going to do is, let's go through these. Now, I'll actually pull in the documentation for these two tables. This is out of that technical reference guide that I talked about earlier. Let's go through each one of these fields so we get a good feel for what it is. This first map set ID is part of the key to the record, but in this case, it's always this value, which is the ICD-9-CM map set. So even though it's a key, it's always this value. The map concept ID is actually a concept ID pointing back to the SNOMED concept file. The map option, these three in combination allow you to have some variance, I believe, on how you map things. But in this instance, it's always zero, and I believe that's in the documentation as well. The map priority, always zero in this particular cross map file. 
The map target ID is the primary key in this secondary file that we're pointing to. And then the map rule, which in this particular map is always null. And then the map advice, which tells you the nature of the map. And those are the values that are available for the nature of the map. Unmappable, one-to-one, -one, narrow to broad, broad to narrow, partial contextual. I'll talk more about that in a second. When we look at the cross map targets file, you've got the target ID, which is the primary key, and you're linked back to the concept ID, essentially. You've got a target scheme ID, which is always this long code value. You've got the target code, which is a pipe delimited collection of ICD-9 codes. And you've got target rule and target advice, which are always null. That's how these columns actually break down in these files. What I like to do, if you've seen my screencast before, is I like to take stuff out that really isn't helping me or isn't doing anything. So we're going to do a columnectomy on this particular, these particular files, and it looks like this. When you're done, the only, the only columns that really have any meaning is the concept ID, which can work as a primary key in this instance. Because of the way these files are created, you can use the concept ID as a primary key. The map target, which links you to this other table. The map advice, which allows you to see the most important thing, which are unmappable and partial contextual map, which I think have limited value, depending upon what you're planning on doing with your SNOMED ICD-9 map. And then in the target file, of course, the primary key, the target ID, and the ICD-9 code column, which is pipe delimited. So after the columnectomy, that's what it looks like. Um, let's go ahead and talk about map advice. The first thing is unmappable. And what this is basically saying is that this code's not mappable. And some somebody might look at that and say, well, that's crazy. Why would they map it to something called unmappable? But I actually think that's useful because I'd rather know that you can't do something if you truly can't do it than have to just speculate on the absence of it that it can't be done. So I think that's fine and it gives you the ability to filter out things or, or know that it's quote unquote unmappable. The one-to-one -one can be a little confusing because it's really not a one-to-one -one in the way you might think of it. So here's a situation, and we'll go into this in more detail, but it's important to note in the documentation it says more than one ICD-9 code may be required to fully describe the SNOMED concept. So one-to-one -one means a conceptual one-to-one, -one, and we'll talk about that more in a second. Narrow to broad, obviously, is a, you have something more narrow in SNOMED than it is in uh, ICD-9. Broad to narrow, the opposite of that, and partial overlap is kind of saying, well, these things are similar, but it really depends on context. And so I threw some examples in down here. So when you look at the map advice breakdown, just across the whole set of SNOMED, or the things that are mapped in the map file. A majority of those things are narrow to broad, small number are broad to narrow, 18% are unmappable, one-to-one -one is 17%, and the partial contextual map is 2%. So really, you're almost tossing out essentially 20% of the things that are, that are in the map file. But it may not be a big deal when we look at actually what these things impact in terms of the concept types and SNOMED. So let's look at the one-to-one -one map and we'll get back into the uh, that in a second. Here's an example of a one-to-one -one map where you have hypertensive encephalopathy and it maps one-to-one -one with its pair in ICD-9. No problem. Here's a situation where you have essentially a concatenated term in SNOMED and it has a one-to-one -one map to two terms in ICD-9. So in this particular situation, the way I prefer to see it is, I understand this is a conceptual one-to-one. -one. So it's saying this term relates to these two things on a one-to-one -one conceptual basis. Obviously, if you've got two terms on one side, it's not a one-to-one -one from a terminology perspective. But that's okay. This still takes care of business. What I tend to do when I see these things is I tend to flip them out. And so here's what it looks like if you break these things out. So you have this term twice relating to these two terms specifically. And the truth is when you look at the total number, when you look at all the one-to-ones, roughly 10%, a little less than 10%, are actually more than one and most of them are two there are a few threes i believe but a vast majority of the one-to-ones are actually one-to-ones on a terminology basis as well as on a conceptual basis when you look at the cross map counts across the board obviously there are 386,965 snowmed terms in the snapshot that i was working with 292,000 of them are current and there's about a hundred thousand of them mapped in the mapping file 
Uh, when you take out the unmapped, there's about 79,000 things that are mapped in some form or another, which is still pretty good. So let's break that down a little bit further. When you break those down by concept types, there are 62,635 disorders mapped. That's a, that's a very good number. Only 147 of those are mapped to something unmappable in the, in the data set that I'm working with. There are 32,000 findings. More than half of those are mapped to unmappable. There are 3,600 events, and we'll get into some of the details down below. Only a few of those are mapped to unmappable, and about 10% of the situations are, are mapped to unmappable. When you look at how they break down by concept type, and you guys might find this incredibly boring, but I just think this stuff's fascinating. I think it tells you a lot about what's going on um, in the file when you kind of break it down like this. And I think it makes a lot of sense. The disorder file has a lot of narrow to broad, followed up by one to one, and then a small number of broad to narrow because typically stuff in ICD-9 tends to be broader than SNOMED. So that makes sense. Very few partial contextual map and very few unmappable. This is great because a lot of what I think people are looking at using when they go from SNOMED to ICD-9 is disorders. Findings, a majority of findings are unmappable. And then it goes narrow to broad, one to one, and then a few partial contextual and, and a very few broad to narrow. With events, if you're working with events, the partial contextual map is number one, narrow to broad number two, 200 are mappables, 39 one to ones, and eight broad to narrows. And with situation, it's narrow to broad is the big winner, followed by one to one, uh, distant second, then unmappable, and then broad to narrow, and then partial contextual map. When I look at what I was doing with the SNOMED CT to ICD-9, this guy really was the one I cared about. And, and actually, those are, those are pretty good numbers. Because when you look at, you know, the SNOMED CT core subset is mostly disorders, if I remember correctly, and it's only 5,000 terms. So 46,000 terms and 15,000 of them being a one-to-one, -one, that's pretty good. That's a, this is an excellent resource. Not necessarily to solve all your problems, but to get you started and to give you a, a basis to evaluate mappings as you go forward. All right, let's do a little walkthrough. What I've got is I have... Microsoft Access, and I've loaded the map sets. I also created a little map map advice table because they give me codes. I like descriptions, so I'm pulling that in. What I do when I pull this table in for query purposes is I've taken the cross map file and I've done my columnectomy. So I've got the concept, I've got the target, and I've got the map advice. I go to the cross map target, and I've actually run a query that splits the cross map target into multiple records. So here's the target ID and I have multiple codes for a given target ID. Let's see if we can find one. Here's an example where this guy breaks down into those two. Now if you, we, we were to look at the original file, the original target file, um, here's 100159 and there's the pipe delimited. So the, the, little, the little thing that I ran um, basically allowed me to take this, split it into two and relate them back to the target. So the cross map target codes, I've done that. And I do that just because when I'm running queries, I don't like having to deal with pipe delimited columns. So be that as it may. And then I pulled in my uh, slightly tweaked version of the concept file that breaks out the concept type and some other things. And I also have a ICD-9 database that I pulled in here. And what it basically did is created a map. So I created a query that basically takes the concept ID, joins it through the mapping table to the target, and then shows the targets and what the target's descriptions are. Now, when I first did this, as you can see, I pulled in the unmappables. So here you can kind of see some of the things that are mapped to unmappable, a lot of findings. And obviously you could come in here and do this finding, which let's, let's assume this is a lab result. It's mapped to unmappable. I can't take it to ICD-9, and that doesn't surprise me. But, you know, seeing what's unmappable really for the purposes of what we're talking about here kind of junks things up. So here's one where I basically filtered out the things that are mappable. And so if we take our concept ID, we'll sort on this guy, and uh, we go through, and here you can see an example of where I come in with this guy, or let's do chronic pharyngitis. We've got a one-to-one -one map on chronic pharyngitis. Now, what does the map advice tell you? Well, the map advice tells you essentially whether or not you're dealing with something that is, is the exact equivalent 
conceptually, or is it a narrower than or a broader than concept data? So there's there's really not a whole lot to talk about with this, frankly. I mean, when you pull things together, it's actually pretty straightforward. The trick here is when you're building this, and if we if we flip into a, an access view. So basically what you're doing is you're taking your concept file from SNOMED. In this case, you're taking the, the whatever you're using to serve up your SNOMED terminology, um, you are going to the cross map file and then you're joining to the target and your target file joins to your IC9 codes. And like I said, I pulled in my little map advice because I like to see what that says. Not really necessary if you're doing this programmatically. If you wanted to build the same type of query, um, with with the files that come directly out of uh, NLM. Let's go ahead and walk through that real quick. So, you know, I go in here and I just called them the XM files. So I'm going to take my SNOMED concept file. I'm going to take my um, cross mapped ICD-9 file, my ICD-9 target file. Um, and then I can't join on the ICD-9 file because the target codes is pipe delimited. And then basically you, you link these things in. Um, once you link them together, you say, okay, if I take my concept and I look at the map advice and I pull in my target codes um, and I only want to see things that are um, one, two, or three. And I run that file and voila. I now have my map to uh, to ICD-9. If uh, we at Clinical Architecture can be of any help, please don't hesitate to give us a call. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.